and Mind Crypto here. I hope we're all having a wonderful day. Now, I had to bring this information to you quickly. Remember, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but this is huge news. This is why I'm bringing a second video today. And we see this from Construction Trader ETH. The BIS Innovative Summit 2024 recorded yesterday. Listen to Augustine Carstens, General Manager of the BIS, talk here. The picture cannot get any clearer. Application programming interface will play a monumental role in the future of finance. This is huge. Let's have a listen to this. By small steps, I mean tweaks and improvements to existing financial systems and infrastructures. This approach has, has its place. It can deliver quick wins, timely improvements in the quality and efficiency of financial services that come at relatively little cost. It is comparatively low risk and important consideration when dealing with critical infrastructure. And it can help allay concerns that financial innovation could disadvantage smaller financial institutions and less technologically sophisticated consumers. But incremental change also has its limitations. The need to look backwards to ensure compatibility with legacy systems constrains what new ones can deliver. As the layers build, the constraints become more binding, eventually holding back innovative developments. This is why I believe that sometimes we need giant leaps that deliver a fundamental rethink of the financial system and foster the development of entirely new architectures. Let me give you a concrete example of a giant leap. Tokenization is, in my view, a technology with transformative potential for the financial system. Tokenized digital assets contain both the information necessary to uniquely identify assets and their owners, as well as the rules and logic governing their use. When correctly used, tokens could increase the speed, lower the cost, and heighten the efficiency of financial transactions. Note my qualifier correctly used. It is important. By themselves, tokenized assets could improve the financial system only incrementally. If tokens were to trade through existing financial pipes, they would have to rely on the same long and complex sequences of messages passed back and forth between financial institutions. And these complex sentences are the cause of many costs and delays in today's financial system. To unleash the promise of tokenization, i.e. to deliver a giant leap, we need to bring the different kinds of tokens together. Commercial bank money, central bank money, tokens on different assets. Unified ledgers are the platforms where this can happen. Once these different tokens are brought together in the same programmable platforms, new functionalities can be deployed, like smart contracts and composability. With them, sequences of transactions could be automated and seamlessly integrated. This would eliminate the need for manual interventions and redundant compliance controls, two issues that significantly delay transactions along the chain of a cross-border payment. It would also enable simultaneous instant payments and immediate and simultaneous settlement across a whole range of assets. Tokens could, in principle, could contain any financial asset, but tokenized money is a core requirement. As Yuval Noah Harari, whom you will have the pleasure to listen to in this conference, said, money is the most universal and most efficient system of mutual trust ever devised. The unified ledger system would build on the trust of the two-tier system of today's financial system. All transactions are carried in commercial bank money, but their final settlement happens in central bank money. And even greater leaps are possible. In a recent paper, Nandan Nilekani and I laid out a vision of how multiple financial ecosystems can interact with each other to form the future financial system, which we have labeled Finternet. 
The Internet would empower individuals and businesses by placing them at the center of their financial lives. Unified ledgers connected to each other through application programming interfaces play a central role in this vision. They would be accompanied by a rich canopy of associated financial applications and services, delivering more choice and lower costs to users. Technology is critical, but not sufficient. It is only effective once it finds its economic and financial purpose and is underpinned by robust regulatory structures. To create a truly coherent vision of the future financial system, we will have to supplement cutting edge technologies with an efficient economic and financial architecture and robust governance and regulatory arrangements. I would dare to say that we are more advanced in the technology than in the other key aspects, legal, regulatory, and operational that are needed to make it work. So then how do we achieve giant leaps? How do we transform a vision into reality? The first step in this long journey are exploring and experimenting. But in doing so, we should always have in mind the larger purpose, the giant leap we hope to achieve. This is exactly what we do here at the BIS Innovation Hub. As an example, let me describe our efforts to explore the potential for unified ledgers with Project Agora. This ambitious new project explores how the tokenization of wholesale central bank money and commercial bank deposits on programmable platforms could, could improve the monetary system. A first use case is to push the boundaries of cross-border payments. Agora was designed to be global and inclusive. It brings together major international currencies, the dollar, euro, yen, sterling, Swiss franc, Korean won, and Mexican peso. The central banks that issue these currencies are some of the most advanced in the world in terms of their technical capabilities. Moreover, the regulated private financial sector institutions that will soon be invited to join Agora will hail from these jurisdictions that sit at the core of the global trading and financial system. Agora illustrates how the BIS Innovation Hub is fulfilling its mandate to examine the potential for technology to build the financial system of tomorrow and to add practical applications to the careful theoretical and conceptual work that has started at the BIS with conceiving the vision of unified ledgers. But there you go, you heard it straight from the organ grinder's mouth application programming interface mentioning project agora in there as well dropping some absolute bombs which is absolutely exciting now we also see this from confidential on is in poll position and we move over to this the future of tokenization permissioned blockchain at least for the near future the majority of institutional tokenization will take place on closed permissioned networks and we see here many interpret blackrock pouring a hundred million dollars into ethereum as a sign that institutional tokenization will finally take off on public permissionless networks it will but blackrock's tokenized fund is only mounting tip of the titanic sized iceberg the crypto industry has cried wolf about institutions coming many times. By this point, we definitely know they're interested in tokenization. The big players, BNP Paribas, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, the Hong Kong government, Franklin Templeton, Hamilton Lane, and now BlackRock have already been exploring blockchain technology for a while. It's certainly a watershed moment when the world's largest asset managers opt for public chain of a private platform like JP Morgan's Onyx or Goldman Sachs Solution. BlackRock's tokenized fund on Ethereum signals institutional trust in a public permissionless network, bringing much needed legitimacy to nascent public ecosystems. The move will encourage other traditional institutional players to transition to on-chain funds. But while BlackRock's tokenization on Ethereum was a bold move worthy of headlines it made, the reality is tokenization is predominantly taking place on private permissioned blockchains. Today, the majority of the institutional efforts have involved private networks. The Hong Kong government's $100 million tokenized green bond used GSDAP deployed on privacy-enabled blockchain Canton. Goldman Sachs, BNY Mellon, 
CBOE, Global Markets, and other firms recently wrapped up a series of pilots on the same network. HSBC has used its platform, the Orion Digital Assets platform, to tokenize gold for everyday investors in Hong Kong. And BlackRock has used the private tokenized collateral network on JP Morgan's Ethereum-based Onyx to tokenize shares in one of its money market funds, which is absolutely huge. As we can see, we're moving forward very, very quickly with regards to tokenization. As we can hear from the BIS there, tokenization, tokenized assets becoming very, very predominant and using those APIs. Now we see this also from Confidential, absolutely on fire today. Critical mass is reached, OVN, is flywheeling into the next financial system and Web3. We can see this from Gilbert Verdian, inviting institutions, banks, and fintechs to attend the upcoming UK finance workshop on RLN. Find out how programmability and tokenized commercial bank money can be used to build new innovative payment flows and how to use and experiment with live infrastructure with your use cases. Registration details for in-person and online events are below. And we can see this from the partner EY, and it says here, calling all innovators. EY is thrilled to announce we will be collaborating with UK Finance on May the 16th. And they're going to host that Innovators Day workshop. The workshop will bring the financial industry and the UK innovator community together to discuss and debate regulated liability network. As we know, Quan is involved in that. Understand the implications on businesses and prepare for post-experimentation engagement in early second half of this year, where businesses will have the opportunity to test the concept further. The RLN initiative is led by UK Finance and involves 11 industry partners, including the largest UK banks and payment networks, and is supported by EY, Linklaters, and four tech firms providing the underlying technology, R3, Quant, Coadju, and DXC technology. This is absolutely huge. These are big dots being connected and hearing from Augustine Carstens there, absolutely huge. I thought I'd bring you another video because wow. So there you go, guys. All the best and I'll catch you later.